Alright guys, I'm going to be showing you the patch section of our 5080 here. In the patch and rhythm section, you can edit your sounds and then write them to memory so that you can sort of have your own personal sounds. So basically here we can go through, we can select any sound we want, we can push our value knob and, you know, like Doc sh just showed us, we can go through and select our category and pretty much pick whatever sound we want. I'm going to go through here, I'm going to find something. Let's go through. Alright, I'm just going to pick a basic sound right here. I'm going to exit. And there's our sound, our amped whirly. Now, in this section we have a few different options on our F keys here. We have common, WG which stands for wave generator, TVF for Time Variant Filter, TVA for Time Variant Amp, and we have our LFO and our effects. And why don't we just start with the first here? We'll go to Common. Now in Common, you can do basic things. All right, in this section, we can do the basic editing functions for each of our sounds. Right here, I can change the name just by changing my value knob here. So you can see there. I can pick a different category. I can actually pick a different sound here. I don't really want to do that because I have my sound set up. I can pick the level here and change it down here. Change it up. I can do the panning. Left, right. Pretty basic stuff. And of course on the right hand side here we have octave shift, coarse tune, fine tune, stretch, analog feel. These are all, you know, basic settings that we can change to mess with our sound. So, what I'm going to show you now, I'm going to exit out of this. Let's go to our second one. We have Wave Generator. Press Wave Generator, and as you can see, we have all kinds of different things here. Now, the first thing to look at when you're in your patch or rhythm section would be right here. As you can see, it's tones. And like Doc was saying before, we have four tones. Now, you can affect every individual tone just by itself. And to do that, we're going to use our Tone Select, which we showed you in the front section. We can select Tone 1, Tone 2, Tone 3, and Tone 4. And basically, we can change parameters for each of those tones. Like right here, for tone 1, I can move my cursor down here, and I can do, you know, all kinds of changes here. Let's see, I can change the gain there, I can change our tempo sync, I can do our FXM switch. Here on our main screen of our patch mode, you can see here also we have tones, 1, 2, and 3. Now that means that the first three tones are selected. Um, now you can have up to four tones for each sound. I can, I can also take off the tones. Now, some sounds, one or two of the tones won't actually be making any noise until you affect it. So you have to test out which ones are on. Now with this sound, what I'm doing is I'm going to hit the keyboard, and as you can see, I have no tone selected, so we don't hear a sound. I'll turn on tone one. Oh, it looks like tone one isn't making a sound right now, so we'd actually have to affect it. So I'm going to turn that off, turn on 2. Oh, there we go. We got a little something here. Let me turn it up. So that's tone 2 there by itself. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, and there's tone 3. And nothing on 4. So now I'm going to turn on 3, and I can turn on 2 at the same time. So we have that low and the high. So now, like I was saying, we can go to any of our other functions here. Let's go to our waveform generator. And we have a couple different options here to start affecting our sound. I'll just go to our basic one. And let's start, you know, messing with our tones. Now I have tone one selected here at the top. Now if we change anything, we're not really going to hear it because tone one isn't up. So let's go to tone two. That was our lower tone there. Now we can start affecting it. Let's go to pitch here, 
and let's do some chorus tuning. I can tune that lower tone up. That's one way of affecting our sound. There. That's the chorus. Got it. So in our wave generator program here, that's our parameters for our waveform generator, we can affect all kinds of things there. We also have, from our patch main menu, TVF for time variant filter. Let's check this out. Remember I'm on tone 2 here. I'm going to go through, let's try our filter type. I'm going to put a filter on it. Right there, LPF, that stands for low pass filter. Or high pass filter. Took out all the low sound there. Oh, you know, let's start affecting it. We can also do our TVF envelope. Let's uh, affect some stuff in here. We can go down and let's try our, why don't we do our velocity sensitivity. Alright, we're going to go to our TVF section or our time variant filter. I'll press this. Now I'm going to show you just a few different ways we can just really get down and start affecting our sound. Now I'm on tone generator 2 here. I can add a different kind of filter, a bandpass filter high pass filter, a PKG, low pass. Now, let me just show you how this sounds. Here's our main sound. I'm going to put a low pass. Right there. It's going to add some lows there. And as you can see, our nice. little waveform here changes when I change, say, the resonance. Space. Yeah. And as you can see, our little waveform went down with it. When you turn it up, it goes up. When you turn it down, it goes down. Now I can do that to a high pass filter as well. Check this out. Let me put on a low. Oh, oh I see. We're taking lows out. Lows out, and I can even boost those right there. The resonance. And boost a little bit of resonance. And now we sort of got a different sound. Now I can also move to tone 3 and change that one as well. I'll put a... I'm going to turn this filter to... let's see... let's try low pass. And I'm going to start turning up our resin, give it a little extra bass. Pretty cool resonance there, we can turn it down. And those are some different ways we can affect it using the time variant filter. I'm going to exit out of this. We also have our time variant. We also have our time variant amplifier. Mm. I'll select this right here. We can change a few different things, like our overall level. See, it's getting quieter there. Can bring it up. It can change our curve here. basic different changes to our actual sound. Let's try our sensitivity. Oh yeah. Mm. And the key here is to experiment. Just try out different things and see what you like. We can also change stuff like panning, key follow, we can do random. sort of different tones under there. And those are some different ways we can affect our patch. We also have our LFO here. We can change different things like from triangle to maybe saw. And that's for tone three. Let me try tone two. Right there, we changed it. Kinds of different changes. We can 
detune it. What's that? And those are some basic changes that we can make. Now, if you accidentally move this sound to say like the next sound, all of those changes will be lost. And you'll be like, oh man, you know, I have to go back and change all that stuff again. Yeah. Now, to not lose any changes, you have to write it to one of your user banks. And how you do that is we're just going to press System Utility. I'll press it once, and as you can see, it lights up. I'm going to press it a second time, and it's flashing. And as you can see here on the screen, we have many different options. We can do Write, Copy, Initialize, Delete, or Protect. Some different ways that we can save, protect, or write our sound. Now, initialize means we can go right back to the beginning and clear the whole machine up the way it was from the factory, right? Exactly. So, I want to do write, so I'm going to press F1. Press F1 here, and now I have to pick a user category to overwrite it to. And I can overwrite it, overwrite the original sound, amped whirly, or I can pick a different sound if I want, say the Moog rings, uh, what is this here, or blue mutes. But you know what? I'm going to overwrite the same sound so I don't sort of have a double in my machine. All these sounds you can get back, like just like Doc just said, by using the initialize function. So let me write it to our Whirly sound. Now it says, user memory write protected. Internal write protect on. That means we protected the sound earlier so that no one can overwrite it on accident. I'll press OK. I'm going to exit out of here, and we're going to turn off our protect by pressing F5 here. I'll press protect, and I'm going to turn it off. Got it. I'll exit. I'll go back to F1 to write. We have amped whirly. I'll press write, completed. Now when I turn off our 5080 and turn it back on, our amped whirly sound that we affected will be the same as when we affected it. Okay, we're going to set up our um, Roland 5080 along with our MPC 1000. Let's just do it, Caleb. All right, this is our basic setup. As you can see, we have both of our power cables. We're all plugged in. Right. We're going to start with our MIDI cables. Now, our first basic cable that we're going to have to hook up, here's our MIDI cable right here, as you can see it. Right there. This is a basic cable. What we're going to do is take our MIDI out of our MPC here. I'm going to take it right out of our first output, MIDI A. Get it nice and snug there. And now we're going to have it so the MPC can transmit the, the info that we've recorded into it back out into our 5080 so our 5080 can play the sounds back. So what I have to do is take it out of the out, take our other end of the MIDI cable, and plug it into MIDI in. So as you can see, we have out going to in. All right, the next cable we're going to have to use is our MIDI cable coming right out of our motif. The motif right there. Now this is coming out of MIDI out on our motif. So we'll take this cable, and this cable is going to be used for recording MIDI data into the MPC. And so what we're going to do is take it, and we'll put it into MIDI in 1 on the MPC. And so now, how our chain looks here is we're going to be playing notes on the motif, it's going to be transferred out of the motif into the MPC, so the notes will get recorded into our sequencer, and then they'll be playing out, the notes will be playing out of our MIDI cable here into the 5080, enabling this to be played back. To trigger the sounds in the 5080. Exactly. Got it. So this is your basic setup if you're using a sequencer, any sequencer really. You're going to use MIDI out of your sequencer into your 5080, and then whatever you're using for your controller, 
say our motif, will be coming into the MPC. And that's it. All we have to do now is take some audio cables that are hooked up to our audio source. We'll just put it into our stereo out, as well with our 5080 right here. We'll take our cables. We've got our snake here that's all labeled. And I, I could even put these through 1 through 8 if I wanted to. But we're just going to use the stereo out, and I'll put it right here. And now, we should be all hooked up. All right, let's make a beat up. All right. Here we got our volume knob. Of course, we can press it in. We're going to audition the sounds. Below that, we have our phone jack. So you can listen to it. Any sounds you actually have in there. And here we have our display. Which displays our parameters and also displays on what page you might want to use these F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Each page has a particular function for this. You can press like a F1 button down and we access the functions right above the F1 or the F2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We also have system and utility. That button's right there. Next we have exit. So we can exit a particular motor ring and go back to our main screen in our display. Now here we have our knob to add value. Let's say you want to change a user. We'll move the cursor down. I can change any sound that's in my display. I'm going to move the cursor down in any page I'm in. Move it to the left or to the right. We can also change value with our decrease or increase the value right here. Give me a patch finder button. We can find patches by category. This button is lit. Next, we have our performance. And here in performance, we can access 16 different channels. It's a multi timbre instrument. So we have a bass line on channel 1, a guitar on 2, a piano on 3, and so on. Now, with this 5080, we have 32 possible sounds we can use. So we have 32 mini tracks. Next we have patch. Now patch is where we can play one sound at a time. We have rhythm. This accesses all our rhythm patches. From power drums, to rave drums, to pop kit, rock kit, jazz, there are many packs we can use right here. We have our general MIDI packages right here also. We press this and we get GM, which acts as our MIDI, general MIDI patches. Now right here on top we have user, which is for our sound library of course. write the patch, and we have a user. If you have a card right here in the memory card section, we'll hit this button here, we can access the sounds on that card. Now here I can press preset down, and I can use my preset sounds. You have many presets here. We got bank A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Now H is your MIDI. And if you have expansion cards, which go into our 5080, we can access expansion cards. These are cards you can buy that have extra sounds on them, like, you know, a bass card or 60s keyboard sounds. You can buy expansion cards at your local dealer. Now below, 
these buttons right here, we have these four buttons, which represent our tone switches. So for one sound, you may have like three or four tones. You may turn some tones off. See, turn them all off, you have no sound. Let's try this tone right here. Or this one right here. Nothing. Here. So, for some sounds, we may have a lot of different tones. I'll hit the preset button here, and you can see these tone buttons change as I hit the presets. And we can edit each one of these tones to perfect our sound. Or we can add tones to it, or take away tones from that sound. Now here we have our shift, undo, disc, and effects. Of course with effects, you can add effects to your sound, like reverb, chorusing, delay. Next we have another set, you can select tones here. One, two, three, four for selecting our tones. As you can see, we have a lot of writing here which tells us exactly what we can do with almost each one of these buttons. For example, I can go to part here, or go to performance, and I would go, let's say, to uh, part. And each one of these buttons corresponds on our screen to a particular part, we'll say, or a mini channel. Now, some of these buttons, it's 117, 218, 319. This could be part one, mini channel one. This could be mini channel three, part three. Here would be 16. We have an actual 32 different mini channels we can access. We can press part select. And now this becomes 17 through 24. And this one becomes 25 to 32. We're in performance now. Now, performance, we have this. Press this button here. I'm going to use my value knob to change what I want to use. Pick a sound. See that? This one. This one. You can see it says part one. Now here you can see below we can actually edit our performance. Now I'm going to press common. Now here in common we can actually change the name of this sound. Okay, now in case you change your name you might want to just solo part select. You go down one more time and here it's off. We can turn it on. For any part, we want to solo up to part 32. Now here, we have the receive channel, which is 1. Receiving from main channel 1. Next, we have key range. Now here, we can adjust the key range of any part that we'd like to. As you can see here, it says part. It says part three. Here, now, part one. And this is the key range for that part. It's a little blackened out square right there. This is the range of our keyboard. And we can select the range up to half of that particular part. We can scroll down. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to 32. So if we have 32 different parts selected, we can select and change the range of that particular keyboard. That's how it's done. Did you see there? As you can see here, it's like every other note selected here in this part.
I'm going to add it up, up to C4, or minus C minus 1. Here, the same thing. As you can see, I line something right across. So my new keyboard range is only from here to here. If I play notes down here, we won't hear any of that part. Next, we have part. Now, here in part, we can see all the changes that we can do that part. We can affect the patch itself, which could be type or rhythm. We have a group, which could be pre, E, or it could even be D, or general MIDI, or user. Move the cursor down again, and we have the number of what number in that group. That's preset group E, number 27, that patch, which is that sound. It says here, the keys, Harper's Accord. Move the cursor down again, and we have the volume. We can change the volume for that particular patch. You can also change the padding, whether it's drawn right or left, or we can go to zero and we are in the center. We can split our bend range for a value. That's tied to the patch right now. We can also change the tuning of that patch. We can shift octaves. We can also use a coarse shifting of that patch. And we can go fine. So we can change the tuning of any patch we pick. Now we're going to patch as a sound. And here we have our voice reserve. Next, I can also hit palette while in this part mode, and we can see the information for several parts from one to eight. I can scroll down, and the same information we saw just on that one part, we can see for every patch, including legato, portamento, and portamento time. We go back to the top here, we have patch. And here we can go to pre, and we can see pre here. And of course here we can select our patch number. What we can also do though, in pre, we can press in our value button, and we can select from another window, from a list of sounds in the preset number E. What button did you press to open that again, Doc? I pressed the value button. So I can press it, it closes it, press the value knob in again, and we open up that window. Cool. Now here we have our favorite list. We may want to go to our favorites here. That's what F2 will do. F3 will change the preset. You can press F3, and we minus it. Now we're in preset D. You can go to group plus group and we're back to preset E. Here we can either go back 10 patches or go up 10 patches. So you may hear this one sound here. And you want to, I want to try the little sound. You want to go back further, we'll go minus 10 patches. Now it's important to note, it's been a right lead channel on the right patch. Now in this case, I'm going to go here to this first patch, which is one. Next, we can go to MIDI. Now here in MIDI, we can select any part. Now each part contains a patch, right? Which is a sound. 
I can get several sounds. Let me want to have like this big keyboard, part one, part two be a different keyboard, part three be another keyboard. But they will all be activated and they will all receive MIDI channel one. See, that's one, one, one. I can also change the MIDI channel. I can change this back to two. I can make this three. And I can have each part can receive its own MIDI channel. And I can change the effect itself. And see, I have a small hole here. I can change the density, the diffusion, the frequency of the gain, and I can change the damping, the high frequency damp here and change the gain of that damp. It's very important to read your mind. You get very complicated with this. You've got to know what you want to get and the type of sound you want to get. Let me give you an overview so you can let's see how our 5080 actually works and understand some of the concepts I'm trying to show you in using the performance mode. Hey Doc, are you also able to do the chorus? Change it just like the reverb? Sure. We'll press chorus, and here we can see the chorus. Center, left, right. We have a high frequency damp right here, which is bypassed presently. We have a feedback. We can even switch it off, where it won't receive any channel at all. Switch that whole patch off. See that? It's a mute switch. Or on. Mute on. Mute off. Below that, we have receive switch. That can be confusing sometimes. So what I normally do, I will just press part. Put a MIDI here. I'll press part right there. See that? And now I can see that patch, which is part one, I can see how I can change my MIDI data. My receive I can change. I can switch the mute on or off. I can change whether I want to receive MIDI data on that track or not, turn it off or on. I can get the MIDI data in from one or the MIDI data from MIDI in two. So I can see the patch by itself in my MIDI, or I can go to palette again and see my overall setup for the rest of my patches. Now in case you want to go past 8, you can always push your part select button in, which is right here. Now once I press that button, I now can access 17, 17 through 24. And I can go, go below that here and press my next button right here. And I can now see from 25 through 32. Press my part select button again, go back to A, and here I am in 1 through 8. I can press this 9 slash 25 button, and now I can see from 9 through 16. So in performance mode, we can actually set up our 5080 and change performance data. We can change what sound we want to use. We can change the MIDI, we can change the keyboard range. We can also change the effects. Now effects are like chorusing or a delay or a reverb. We can use them some sounds, like maybe a string, you might want to have a lot of reverb on it. All depends. Well here we can do that. As you can see here from 9 through 15 again. We also have, there's a reverb. I go to my reverb, and I can change the effect itself. And 
See, I have a small hole here. I can take the density, the diffusion, the frequency to gain, and I can change the damping, the high frequency damp here, and change the gain of that damp. It's very important to reach your mind. You get very complicated with this. You've got to know what you want to get and the type of sound you want to get. I'm going to give you an overview so you can let's see how our 5080 actually works and understand some of the concepts we're trying to show you in using the performance mode. Hey Doc, are you also able to do the chorus? Change it just like the reverb? Sure. We'll press chorus and here we can see the chorus. Center, left, right. We have a high frequency damp right here, which is bypassed presently. We have a feedback. We have our delay level, center, left, and right. And what's that at the top there, where it says delay? Right here. Right here. That, that's our. This is our type of delay. We can change the delay time, or we can change the chorus for this chorus. We have one or two things: do a chorus or a delay. When we press our chorus button down. And we can change that. The value of how much the delay will be according to our tempo. Then I can press general. And we're back again in our main effect screen. Now, whenever you're in a screen, let's say you're in an effect screen or a MIDI screen or a keyboard range, you can always exit that by pressing our exit button right here next to F6. And we're back where we started from. As you can see, it's a keyboard range, our part, MIDI, and effect. And of course, our palette. And our palette means we can see what's happening on every channel that's in the window, or every part that's in the window. And that's how you would turn up the reverb on each individual part, right? Exactly. As you can see here, we have a dry send, we have our chorus send, and our reverb send. Here, this is zero. So we have mostly dry sound going here for this particular patch, which is 13. Now, if I'm here in A, I can also use my output MFX select, where I can select my effect for A, B, C, or D correspond to the output on the back of our 5080. I can press effects and you can see we showed this already but now we're in MFX control. We have parameters also. But here in control I'll turn it down the top here and we can use this stereo effect. We can use overdrive. We can access other effects that we can use and send through that A, B, or C output. Limiter. We have many effects. Let me see what we got here. Wow. We've got over, that says 90, right? Mm -hmm. 90 effects. It's a 3D manual effect. You can use these effects in our performance mode for each individual sound that we have going out from 1 to 30. Alright, we just did our patch mode. Now, rhythm mode is basically the same, just a little bit different. You have your drum kit here, all your different drum kit sounds, and it's a little bit different. We have common, which was the same as before. We can name, do our basic changes there. And now we have key WG, key TVF, key TVA, and key CTL. Now what this means is for individ what this means is it's for individual keys or individual drum hits. So what we want to do first is pick the kit that we want to affect. I would pick say our key TVF just like I showed you before, our filter. And when you hit a sound, you can 
can see that it comes up here. And that's the sound that we're affecting. We have tom, I have a snare there. Now I can affect just that snare. I can do I can affect just that snare. I can do a low pass filter. Oh, let me find my snare again. There it is. Low pass. Or say high pass. And start affecting that individual snare sound. And so basically all the functions that I showed you for patch are the same for rhythm except for for individual keys. And you would write it the same way by pressing system utility two times, wait till you see it's flashing, and go through the same procedure. Okay, first we've got our AC in. Make sure the proper input into our 5080. It's very important. Read your manual to make sure you have the right output going into your ACN. Okay, here we have our MIDI in one through. That means whatever comes in MIDI one goes through our 5080 and comes back out here. You can send to another device that receives MIDI later. We have a MIDI out. And we have our MIDI in two. We also have a SCSI port right here. Hook up a SCSI device. We also have an RS bus. Excuse me, an R bus for an output. We have a word clock in. It should be 44.1 or 48. We have an optical in. And spit of coaxial right here. Output. Now above here we have our output. We have A, which I mix left and right. We've got B left and right, C left and right, and D left and right. Okay, let's get busy. Alright guys, we showed you how the machine works. Now, Roland XV5080, we can do the performance mode, the patch mode, we'll show you how to use MIDI, use the effects. Well, now, we're going to show you how we can use them to make a track. Now, remember, get your setup right. Make sure you've got the proper MIDI cables, and make sure they work. Make sure your power is properly set up, you know? So, don't burn your machine out. Read your manual. We can show you many things. But it's important for you to read the manual along with our video. If we showed you everything in the manual, it'd be a super long video. It'd be like a movie, three or four hours long, which is crazy. We're going to give you a great overview. But right now, we're going to show you how to make a track. Check this out. Okay, performance mode, let's see on my part, and now...
Now here we are on these nylon strings. We got double folk. I can move across here and pick this up. Okay, I'll pick that sound right there. And you see I have it here in my patch number. How oh, I get that, I press that value button in. I see that page. I pick my sounds. Well now, put the beat on. Now, Doc, how did you know that that was on MIDI channel 1? Well, see, I can press MIDI here, and I know it says MIDI channel 1. Receive channel, MIDI 1. I'll go press part again. I can see that part. I'll push the value button in, and I can see that's the soft 2. So I know I'm MIDI channel 1. I have MIDI channel 1 set up on my MPC 1000. So now, I want to go to MIDI channel 2. Then I want to move my cursor here to part 2. I'll press MIDI, and I can see part 2 is on MIDI channel 2. As you can see right there. I'll switch to MIDI channel 2. I'll move down. I'm ready to receive on MIDI channel 2. I'll press part again. Okay, now I'm going to pick out my next four sounds. Let's see what we got here. We're going to go through our system here. I'm going to go up here and hit my user. I'm going to go to my user bank, actually. And here we go. And we got brass. We got some guitars. Maybe I want to hit some stuff there. I got a rogues over here. And I'm going to move this cursor here. Okay, I'll pick a rogue there. Next, I want to go. There's a retro. Cool. Key in. And here, I'm going to change this sound. I can go to my single right here to the patch bank. Now I'll push this in so you can see what I'm doing. And I can go here, 10 more. I'll move my up to channel 3. Now I go to channel 4 on my MPC. And go to 5. Let's pick a new sound for 5. Here at 5, I'll press it in. Pick a different sound. Cool. So each time you change the MIDI channel on the 5080, you have to make sure that you change the MIDI channel on the MPC, right? Exactly. I'm making sure now I'm on MIDI channel 6 on my MPC. And as I play here, I have no sound. Look at that. No sound from a motif. Well, something's wrong. I'll press MIDI. Aha. Uh -huh. I want to make sure that 6 is on. 6 receive is off. Let's turn it on. Now, I'll be able to trigger the sound I want. And make sure my MPC is set up. Okay, I picked up my four sounds now. And now I'm going to layer them along with my MPC. Now, the reason why we're using our 50A is because we can actually use more than one sound in performance mode. Now, I already got my first sound picked up. A little bass sound I've got right here. It's pretty high. Yeah. A little bass sound there. Now I want to add something on my mini channel too. Okay. I'm gonna practice this first. Now I'm gonna play it. Two, three, four. Let's try again. One, two, three, four. Now I go to mini channel three. And 
Now I'll press record and play. Two. So what is layering sounds? Just having a little fun here. A little track. It gives you an idea. That's why I'm doing such an abstract track. That way you can see and you can hear that I'm doing different things on a performance mode in my 5080. Now I'll go back here again for my next track. Now here I'll press record and play. doing here, I'm actually just making sure I have a separate MIDI channel for every sound. I make sure my MPC, the first time I recorded on, was my drum on a separate track in that sequence. The next track in that sequence was MIDI channel 1. I made sure I had MIDI channel 1 set up here. The next track was MIDI channel 2, then MIDI channel 3, 4, and 5. And you must make sure that you're on a proper MIDI channel. So when you do overlay your sounds and they get your beat together, you've got it right.